Here's the question that I asked at the end of the previous part of the lecture, and I'll admit that this is actually a rather mean question because it plays right into exactly the sorts of misconceptions that students often have at this point. Let's look at A. It seems very plausible, doesn't it, right? The ball is going to hit the ground and it's going to stop, so surely the final velocity will be zero. So it's very tempting, but unfortunately it's wrong, because that's not what we mean by the final velocity. Remember a few lectures ago when we were talking about this case of an object thrown up into the air and then later on hitting the ground. We can only analyze the time when it's in free fall. We don't have any equations that can tell us anything about after it hits the ground, and it's after it hits the ground that its velocity will be zero. So what we mean by the final velocity here is the velocity at the instant just before it hits the ground. C is very, very wrong, because g is not a vector, and I've asked for a velocity. And so the answer has to be a vector. And also, g is in meters per second squared, and a velocity in meters per second. So it definitely can't be C. But many students find it tempting at this point because they're still having trouble distinguishing between accelerations and velocities. So the answer is B. Just like in the question in that earlier lecture where we were dealing with this case of the ball thrown up in the air, we would have to solve for the final velocity. Another case we'll look at in some detail is uniform circular motion. And what I mean by uniform circular motion is that we have an object that's moving in a circle and it's moving with a constant speed. Well, we already know from earlier in the lecture that when an object goes around a corner at constant speed, the acceleration vector points perpendicular to the velocity, when the velocity, remember, is pointing tangent to the trajectory. In the case of a circle, that means that the acceleration points directly to the center of the circle. Notice something about uniform circular motion that often confuses people. Neither the acceleration nor the velocity is constant. You may now be shaking your head in confusion, because I just said this is motion with constant speed. Yes, I did. Constant speed, not constant velocity. The velocity is constantly changing its direction, and so it's changing, even though the speed, which is its magnitude, is staying constant. And the same goes for the acceleration. The acceleration's magnitude is constant in uniform circular motion, but the acceleration has to constantly change direction if it's going to remain pointing to the center of the circle. We're not really ready to look at this yet. I just wanted to flag it as a case where we already can tell which way the velocities and accelerations point. We'll look at it at the very end of the course. A final special case that we'll spend some time on is non-uniform circular motion, which just means circular motion with a changing speed. So here's a motion diagram for circular motion where this object is speeding up as it goes around the circle. And we can find the acceleration, as usual, at one point by just carrying out the usual vector subtraction. And we see that the acceleration vector still points inward, but not directly towards the center of the circle. In this case, because the object is speeding up, as we already know, there has to be a component of the acceleration that points forward. And there still has to be an inward component because for the trajectory to be curved, there has to be a component of the acceleration that points to the inside of the curve. Again, we're not ready for this. We'll look at this at the very end of the course in the circular motion unit.